we are sent by God mm -hmm. on His mission, on His purpose in the world, then to whom are we sent with this message? To whom does He want us to go, Redemptress in particular? Father General, who is the Redemptorist? We are among many other religion congregations. What makes us different from others? Well, that's actually, that's a very, very good question. And especially in the world we're living in today. What does it mean to be a Redemptorist? And how is being a Redemptorist different from Franciscan, Carmelite, Jesuit? There are differences. I think most important is that we are all meant to be complementary. We are all meant to build up the church, the people of God, and to serve the world. But God calls us in very specific ways. What has always struck me as being at the heart of being a Redemptorist are three things. First, a man who is absolutely dedicated to follow Jesus, the preacher, the evangelist, the Redeemer. Secondly, someone who follows Jesus, the Redeemer, in community, that we do it together. You will never find, or should never find, a Redemptorist all on his own. He is always with other Redemptorists, and together we are following Jesus. And thirdly, he should be among the poor. He should be among the people who are abandoned on the margins of society in the world in which he lives. These are the three factors that come together that really well, they're the heart of our vocation. Absolutely to follow Jesus, but he calls us together as a community and he sends us to the least of his brothers and sisters. Father General, uh, we know the our founder, St. Alphonsus Liguori, founded our congregation. It was his response to the needs he observed in yeah. his times. Mm -hmm. but the time has changed. Uh, is this the same today, the same needs, the same challenges for us? In one sense, they're very much the same. Because even though our world changes, and even though the times have changed, there are still always people on the margins. There are always people who are on the periphery of society. St. Alphonsus in his day looked, and, and he saw that as people had moved into the big cities like Naples, that the people who were left behind in the countryside, the people who were earning their living working in the mountains, the people who were small peasant farmers, they were on the margins of society. They had no voice. Usually they were very poor, and often they didn't even have a priest who would listen to them, care for them. Now, today, it might not be peasant farmers in the mountains and hills of southern Italy who are abandoned. It could be people right in our big cities. It could be young people who find no one listens to them, who feels the church is for their parents and grandparents. It can be migrants who have left their culture and their home. But there are always people on the peripheries. Pope Francis keep reminds, keeps reminding us of that. We've got to go to the margins of society. We've got to go to both the geographical peripheries the places where no one else wants to go because they like the good life or they're very comfortable where they are, or what he calls the existential peripheries. The people who might be living right in our midst, but they're almost invisible. Could be the elderly, could be the, the young people. That will change in different societies. Mm -hmm. But what St. Alphonsus had was a heart for the people who were left out for the people on the margins. And he wants us, Redemptress, to have a heart for the people on the margins. And then we'll, we'll go where they are, 
even if sometimes it's very difficult for us to do so. Uh, Father General, uh, the mission, uh, our congregation is called uh, missionary. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Um, to whom uh, are we sent by the Most Holy Redeemer? The first part, as you say, is missionary. And missionary, for anyone who doesn't know where the word comes from, it comes from the word to be sent. We are sent by God on His mission, on His purpose in the world. Uh, Maria Celeste Costa Rosa talked about us being sent to carry out the intention of the Father for the redemption of the world. Now, then to whom are we sent with this message? To whom does He want us to go, Redemptress in particular? Our constitutions and statutes tell us very clearly that we are sent to anyone who does not receive the gospel as good news. Anyone for whom the church has not been able to provide the sufficient means of salvation. Anyone who feels cut off, abandoned, alone. Those are the first principles. But then it goes on to say, among anyone to whom we could be sent, we must have a special heart and love for the poor. Because they have fewer resources. They have fewer opportunities. And we can help them to discover the value and meaning in their lives. The materially poor. Now, our constitution statutes tell us mm -hmm. we're sent to migrants, we're sent to young people, we're sent to people who've abandoned the church because they've been hurt somewhere along the line. We're sent to families that are struggling or broken. We're sent to the elderly. Sometimes they're the most abandoned of all because their children have grown up, moved away, maybe even to other countries. And there's no one who pays special attention. In some societies in Europe, old people die alone and no one finds them until much later. Uh, we're sent to those who are really in danger, vulnerable, of being abandoned, forgotten, the invisible. So those are the ones to whom we're sent. So we've got a mission, we're sent by God. We've got the people we know to whom we should be going and we've got a message. And the message right. is redemption, freedom. You're loved, you're valuable. You make a difference. And I think with those three together, you've got what Redemptors should be doing today. Different ways than were done in the past, but building on the tradition we receive right back to Alphonsus. Father General, uh, what uh, would we call the usual way we, we bring this mission? Is it a privileged way or type of a ministry yes. through which we, we bring this, this, this message? When we began with St. Alphonsus in Naples in the 1700s, the privileged way of bringing this message to the poor and the abandoned was through preaching parish missions. Mm -hmm. Now, when he went out to preach a parish mission, it wasn't just the preaching that took place in the church. The Redemptorist missionaries who went visited every home. The priests and brothers knocked on every door. If they noticed that some family wasn't coming to the church, they made a special effort to go to them. They reconciled enemies who were fighting with each other. And that happens in small villages and in big cities, sometimes even in families. And they always made possible the sacrament of reconciliation because God wants the world to be reconciled. But preaching was really very special and at the heart of the Redemptorist mission. Now, when St. Clement went to Warsaw and to St. Benno's, they weren't allowed to go preach parish missions. He tried. The government wouldn't let them, and many of the clergy wouldn't let them go and preach parish missions. So what did he do? He made St. Benno's a place of welcome, where anybody could come, but he saw there were other needs. There were needs for education, there were orphans, there were people who didn't have a trade, especially young women. So let's preach the good news to them by responding to those needs at the same time, never forgetting preaching the Word of God but also bearing witness through our social ministry. And it expanded what we could do. He involved lay people doing that. 
And so that got built on to our traditional way of being Redemptorists. Very, very vital and important. We can't forget this side of our ministry either. Then they went with migrants to North America. Clement dreamed of going there, but he never got there. But when Father Passerat, who succeeded St. Clement north of the Alps, he started to send Redemptor St. John Neumann and others who went to the Americas to accompany migrants. Well, there they needed to establish parishes, build up catechesis, Catholic schools. And so our ministry our way of conducting our mission grew. Now today, we've got communications we never had before. We've got the media, we've got social media, we've got television, radio. So look at the Warsaw province with Radio Maria, with uh, TV Twam, with so many other means of reaching out to people with the same message. So it's really important, I think, not to think that there's only one way of doing it. The Holy Spirit has continued to inspire faithful Redemptorists to find new ways of doing our message as the world. But we never stopped preaching. We've never stopped our social ministry. We've never stopped working in parishes. We've never stopped being close to people, hearing confessions. But we add something new, a new possibility and opportunity. I find that very exciting. Father General, maybe you remember a uh, uh, mission of ministry, a kind of ministry uh, that did touch you mostly because it was very demanding or challenging or fruitful maybe? Mm -hmm. I think there are lots of stories I could tell and, and some of them are, are, are quite extraordinary. I think of, for example, of the Redemptorists in Vietnam, where they've had a mission among the hill people, indigenous people, tribal people in the hills, for about 50 years. And over that course of 50 years, there's been about 56,000 convert to become mm -hmm. Christian Catholic. This Why? is our times. Yeah. yeah, and they just, it's because they go to them, they are close to them, they've learned their language, they wrote hymns with the basic truths of the catechism in the music of the people there. And they accepted their way of doing things. And you see the response of these people to Redemptorist missions. It really is heart moving. And the government wasn't crazy about them being there among those people. In um, Brazil, go into the shrine of Our Lady of Aparecida and you could have 20,000, 25,000 people come, people coming up on their knees to bring their needs to our Blessed Mother. People really desperate. Sometimes it's their last chance and there's always a Redemptress there to welcome. If you can walk in and out of the church in a parasita without somebody coming up to you and saying, God bless you, how are you doing? You, you, you must have really tried hard because there their motto is when we welcome well we already evangelize and you should be there for a reconciliation service and then watch the people going into communion uh, going into confession and sometimes with tears streaming down their faces so you, i could just think and go on and on of the places where i've been where i've seen this kind of service missionaries in the philippines or in indonesia where a parish mission is not one week or two weeks preaching in the church. It's three or four or five months living in small isolated villages, getting to know the people, bringing them into the church, teaching. They do have the week of preaching, but they're building up small Christian communities who can carry on this apostolate, really, this ministry of bringing the Word of God to others. And the Redemptorist missionaries are sharing exactly their life, their food, their accommodations, no running water in many places. You see this and you say, that's what it means to be a missionary and to be close to people. So yeah, there's lots of different stories we could tell. Uh, Father General, you mentioned already the, about evangelization. Mm -hmm. It is the 
the, not recent, but very, let's say, loud call of the church. It is. That we have to go to evangelize. Uh, what Redemptorists are doing to respond to this call of the church? I think the best answer to that is we're continuing to go and evangelize. We do have groups who are studying how to do it, especially in the light of secularism. We do have groups who are studying how to do it in dialogue with Muslims. So we've got that whole side of what does it mean to evangelize in this world today, the study. But much more than that, Redemptorists are doing it with their feet. They're going out to bring good news to people. They're going out to engage in ministry and to encounter young people where they are. Now sometimes it's not so much with their feet, it might be with the mouse of their computer as they're entering into the digital world where so many young people live. But those are all just means, they're all just instruments. When I think of evangelization and redemptress, I think of what Pope Francis wrote in uh, Evangeliaudi, where he wrote about it's not the same thing to have known Jesus Christ as not to have known Him. It's not the same thing to walk with Him every day as not to have ever walked with Him. It's not the same thing to live as if God really matters to me here and now as to live as if God doesn't even exist. And if we believe that, then we can't help but spread it. And we spread it by the way we talk to each other, by the way we live together, by the way we pray, by the way we smile at someone, by the way we welcome. And Redemptors, I think, we're famous for doing that. Talk to people in a Redemptors church, and what will they say? Those priests, those brothers, really care about us. If I ever go anywhere and hear, he doesn't care about us, I'll say, time to move him. He shouldn't be there. But I don't hear that. What I see is our men, well, what we call it, voting with their feet. They're going out and doing it. They're doing evangelization. I think that's what Pope Francis would be very, very proud of with Redemptress, wherever they are. We hope. I hope we so. I <laughs> Thank you, Father General. <laughs> Thank so you, much Father for Gregory. The time and for, for this fantastic talk. For well, it's, talk. Great, it's, <laughs> great, it's great to talk to you. I don't know.